Good morning. Warm welcome to you on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning in the month of August. The heat has abated, and uh, for that, I'm sure all are thankful. There's a lot of information printed in your bulletin here, so I do invite you to please fold this up and put it into your purse or your pocket uh, for the way home. We do not need those recycled, so please don't give those back to us. Uh, We hope that you'll instead take it home with you and remember in prayer throughout the week all of those persons who are listed there. A couple of announcements uh, for, um, for funeral services. The first is printed in our bulletin. You'll notice that uh, Don Lake uh, passed away recently, and his, uh, his service is going to be in a couple of weeks on September 8th, September 8th. So we we'll hope that you'll join us for that service. Also, yesterday, Jolene Hamann passed, but her service is going to come very quickly. Uh, The service for Jolene Hammond will be here at St. John's this Tuesday morning, so just a couple of days from now at 10.30 in the morning. So please take note of that, and if you would, pass the word word around. We're getting back to that time of the year where we have uh, all of the volunteer activities beginning, so if you can help out with with Sunday school or catechism, or if you like to sing or you have some musical ability, uh, please consider uh, talking to Mike about those offerings. You know, frankly, even if you don't have any ability, he can lend you some of his, okay? So so see, Mike, there's a lot of great stuff going on, and um, it really is a wonderful time together. Again, please take uh, your flyer home with you. There's much information there, and uh, spread the good word. With that, please turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal to the brief order of confession and forgiveness. And rising, please face the cross at the back of the church. We begin now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so let us now make confession of our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn number 434, Jesus Shall Reign.
Kyrie and hymn of praise are found at pages 203 and the first part of 204. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful people of every age, we praise you, for you are the rock of our life. Be the strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son that we may gladly minister to all the world. For we ask these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapters 1 and 2. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were 
They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of, wh one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife, before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with them with, well with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she held him three months. She hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bit bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before, Before the, the gods, gods I, sing I sing your, your praise. praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your, to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you, you have, have exalted, exalted your, your name and your, and your word, word above, everything. above everything. On the day I called you, you answered me, you increased my strength of soul. All the Lord, kings of the, the earth shall praise you, O Lord, Lord for, they for they have, have heard, heard the words of your mouth. mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your, and your right hand, hand delivers, delivers me. me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love. O the Lord, Lord endures, endures forever. Do not, Do not forsake the work of your hands. hands. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For what, as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in pro proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, and the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said to him, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, first of all, I should tell you all grown-ups that for the noisy offering this morning, you can put your pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters into, there's a couple of buckets right on the pedestals at the end of the center aisle here on your way home this morning. The noisy offering, of course, is in support of the Sioux City Gospel Mission. And uh, even though it's just maybe pocket change to one person, you bring all the body of Christ together and that adds up to a couple thousand dollars each and every year. So um, we do thank you for your pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters and, and all of that good stuff. I should also say, I neglected to mention at the beginning this morning, but there's a number of improvements around the property, and you'll see them, the, the paint striping in the parking lots, and the, and, the, and the air conditioning siding has been tuned up, and the, there's work going on in the Sunday school classrooms, and the lighting and the ceilings, and fresh paint. So if you see a member of the property committee, do please say thank you to them. They're really doing some, some very needed and wonderful work around, uh, around the church in anticipation of the new school year. So thank you, and uh, we appreciate your efforts very much. But I suppose you're wondering what I might say this morning about the Bible. And in particular, I hope that you're curious about all of these beautiful uh, reeds and canna lily that are up here, because it was into the reeds that the daughter of Pharaoh, the princess of Egypt, you must understand, the princess of Egypt Here's this baby crying, uh, 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 I, I suppose unconsolably, and draws him out of the water. For this is where the salvation of God's people uh, truly, truly begins with the finding of the infant that the princess of Egypt, of all people, names Moses. Moses. And do you catch why she named him Moses? Because finding him in the river Nile, she draws him up out of the water. That is what the name Moses means. I have drawn him up out of the water. There'll be a baptism later at the second service this morning, and in, in, in any time that you find water, together with God's Word, there you also have immediately at hand, salvation. Any place, any passage of Scripture that you come across, whether we are talking about in the beginning when God separates the waters above the dome from those beneath, or whether you're talking about the great flood with Noah and the ark, or whether you're talking about Moses being drawn up out of the river Nile, or whether you're remembering him striking the rock in the middle of the wilderness and water gushes forth from it, if you think of Peter sinking down in the waves, right? We read that story a couple of weeks back. And he, he, he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately catches him by the hand and, and draws him up out of the water. In the end of all things, when God's people finally all are together in the city of God, in the new Jerusalem, 
what do they walk alongside? But the river of the water of life, the river of life that flows through the middle of the city. Whatever the story, whatever the occasion for God's people, whenever you find water in the Bible, together, of course, it is with God's Word, then you have God acting in the world, acting in the world for salvation. And so it is that a very strange person, the daughter of Pharaoh himself, the one who has issued the edict that all the boys shall be cast into the river Nile so that they may perish, and undoubtedly they died quickly. So it is by this strange bedfellow, you might say, the princess herself, that God's salvation comes to his people. Because don't ever mistake it. Even though it may be bewildering and befuddling, God is at work in the world and has always been. So it is that this agent of death, the river Nile with its crocodiles and floods and all of these things, becomes the source of life. And not just for the one child, but for the many. For the nation of Israel, from this one little baby woven into a basket of, of, of reeds. Thank you, Doug. Uh, where's Doug, where's Doug uh, Carlson? Not Doug Carlson, I'm sorry, Doug Schultz. He's ushering this morning. Doug, are you listening out there? I hope you're paying attention. We cut the, cut the reeds yesterday from one of the golf course ponds. The canna lily came from right outside the church. Uh, One was bent over, broken like an elbow, right? And just dangling. And I thought, well, that doesn't look good. So I cut that one and it's it's right in there. And and then the other one standing beside it looked lonely. So I thought, we'll bring that in too and it'll have its final days of glory. Right? But when we peer into the reeds, we can see the salvation that God orchestrates for his people. Wherever you find water, you find the salvation of our Lord. And having been washed in the water yourselves, you can trust and be assured that God's salvation is for you. St. Peter, when he writes one of his letters, remembering the great flood with Noah and the ark and the animals and how God washed the earth clean of sin at that time, St. Peter, remembering this, says the flood is actually a prefiguration, to use a big word that's hard to pronounce a lot of the time, at least for me. This flood prefigures baptism, which washes you clean, you who have received it, not by an external cleansing of dirt from the body, but the cleansing of sin for a clean heart and for an appeal to God for a good conscience, a yearning down deep in the heart which God must make clean, because you cannot, which God must wash thoroughly. And so he does. And that is why, because you've been baptized, you can be assured that God's salvation is given also to you, and that the day shall come when you shall stand with all who have been washed, hearing Jesus say to you, as he did to the eleven on the night of his betrayal when he washed them. Only the feet need to be washed, Jesus says, because you are already clean. I have made you so. Wherever you find water, you find salvation. Wherever you have God's word, people understand. So it is that with Moses. Notice all the irony. I don't have time to talk about that this morning. I'll let you read it for yourselves. It jumps off the page at you. Notice the irony of this story, right? Pharaoh's own daughter uh, finds the child. It's Pharaoh himself who has commanded the child be killed. He's set down into this river of alligators and crocodiles, right? And yet he is drawn up by the most gentle of all hands. And when, when, when the sister, did you notice the roles of all the women? The women run the church. They always have, right? Did you notice how, how the sister is shrewdly watching from a distance and seeing all of this transpire, the princess and her entourage finding the child, right? I'm sure he's screaming bloody murder, right? 
What is the sister? She runs up to the princess and she says, do you want me to find somebody to nurse the child for you? I know someone who can do that. Who do you think did that? Her mother, of course, right? The baby's own, the baby's own mother. Oh, and by the way, the princess says, thank you. I will pay her for her wages. <laughs> wow. How about that? Well, I hope that has whetted your appetite for a little bit of what is in store for you in the feast that is to come in salvation in Jesus' name. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ, and amen. Let us confess our Christian faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer for all of God's children in this place and for all in their time of need. O oh Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that you draw us up out of the deadly waters that rage around us and that you are at work both in our lives and in the world. O oh Lord, when we are perplexed and bewildered, when we do not know where salvation shall come from, turn us again to your word that we may hear your promise and trust in all that you have said you would accomplish. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Especially we give into your loving and strong arms all of our friends and family and neighbors and community here. Especially we pray for Lavon, Deanna, 
Dylan, Mercedes, and Don. We ask your blessings for Scott and Barry, Karen, Pearl, and Brittany. O Lord, stay close to the side of Christy and Ron, Diane, Steve, and Denny. Remember every good thing that you have sworn to give by your own self to Morgan and Matt, Tyler, Brian, Daryl, and Jake. O Lord, stay close to the side of Becky and all of those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, pour out your mercy upon these, your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially, Lord, we ask that you comfort and strengthen all who have lost loved ones. We pray especially for the family of Don Lake, for the family of Jolene Haman, for the family of Rachel Jungeberg, and for the family of Judy Ann Svensson. O Lord, comfort their loved ones. Let them be reassured that the day shall come when all shall stand together again at that great feast, at the heavenly banquet that you have prepared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for peace among the nations, especially in Ukraine and all of Africa. Lord, we ask that you would change the hearts of those who are inclined to violence and that you would keep their hands from such deeds, that instead, laying down their weapons, they would live in peace and harmony with their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the children in our midst. We pray your blessings for them as they begin a new school year. Watch over them in their classes and their coming and going. Strengthen their teachers, faculty, and all staff so that the children may be blessed and they may have a productive and glad year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, your, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Now turn our hearts to those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, 
and prepare us to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our salutary duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and ever-merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set, all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of whatever congregation you might ordinarily attend, all the baptized are welcome to the table. Please be seated, coming forward in two lines at the direction of your ushers.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life in your mercy. Strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning, number 638. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.